So we're now at the point where the car is actually turned onto its side. Um, do a short video and uh, show the uh, fare that I built that kind of worked out. Get it on its side. Um, had some problems. Uh, I would have designed it differently if, uh, if I thought about it. But uh, we'll show it and look at it, and you know we can move on from there. I use these stands that I've made to set the frame up to work on the frame. These heavy duty saw horses. And I made this sort of raising and lowering. You can see that very well there. This uh, rotational couple of plates welded to a piece of channel that I just welded onto the caster affair that I built earlier for the body and I just set it up with some heavy duty steel tubing and uh, some gussets two plates to kind of pin it the biggest problem here with this whole thing is that you can kind of see the bend in that piece of tubing right there that should have been thick wall and wasn't um, but it's the center line of the actual rotational part of this that uh, it's not really centered on the body of the car very well and so the um, the weight of the car is far too much for it. You can see I have the cowl blocked right there to to keep the the body from resting on the roof which would not be a good thing um, let's walk inside here. Really, you know, once the car is on its side like this, now you can really see everything that you need to do. And uh, so, now this I've determined I can patch. I will not need a floor pan for that. This is the uh, driver's side rear part of the floor. Um, this has uh, the Tremec tunnel. I've installed here for the transmission. I need to do some patching work around that to make it fit better. But you can really see the passenger side in the front, that's pretty thin and lacy. So I've determined I'm going to replace that with a with a new pan. Um, I would thought I'd patch it, but I once you get it on the side you can see all the thin spots. So it's, yeah, it's way too thin, this floor. And you really so much of the stuff that you can crawl under the car and look at from when the, when the car is is upright you really can't tell what you've got to deal with until you get the vehicle rolled over onto its side so if you're going to do a a Tri-5 restoration or any vehicle restoration, you almost have to figure out a way to get this part of it done. You've got to get it over here. Um, or sorry, right down here on this brace. Right there, it's a broken body mount bolt. I didn't know that was there. There's a couple of them on this car. There's one over here. Another one broke off. Not something I would have known until uh, start trying to mount it back on the frame. You can see our wheelhouses, the wheelhouse seals. I need to uh, replace those. Uh, here's where the rear wheelhouse took a hit at some point. Overall, I mean, as far as tri fives go, this car is amazingly intact. It's not a complete rust bucket. You know, it's just, uh, uh, you can't really see because of that brace there. Maybe if I come down here, you can see where the uh, spare tire well took a hit. All right, no big deal. Probably won't even mess with that. So, it needs to be cleaned up, and I'm going to. Uh, undercoated and come back in here with the uh, 
you can see this. This is just a poor cutting job I did here. Some of this was, you know, had big holes in it anyway from the previous cutout, but I really miss that terribly. This one pisses me off. It's like a big patch there I'm going to have to put in. A dummy. But, uh, you know, you can see all the little welds. There's a big tack weld where I tack welded it to the channel when I took the body off the frame. You know, all stuff I get to take care of and clean up. There's a pinch weld a little bit messed up down here. I don't know how this got messed up, but I really don't care. I mean, it's just, it's all really good steel. Now look at these braces. They're all just surface rust. Nothing rusted through. Lots of uh, lots of cars I've seen. These are just completely gone. Don't even have them anymore. And uh, fortunately, I mean, all this any of the sheet metal you need is available for these tri fives. So here's a part of the whole body mount that's. Oh, look at there. There's another broke. I can't. You can't see it. I don't think. There it is. It's another broken bolt. So all stuff I get to work on. Yeah, I guess we'll show the next video after I get the car underside cleaned up, sandblasted, coated, bolts pulled, and uh, the welding done. I have some more welding to do on the cowl, and then uh, I think the plan is to try and join the uh, the body back to the the frame with the engine and everything. So I got to get some paint and get the cowl painted, body color that we're going to paint it, and um, we'll join the two back together, and then. Everything can be back in one place inside the carport here. Uh, the project can't continue. Oh yeah, here's a... This is a car in the neighborhood. I just, uh... I took a picture of that car. It's all original. 56, Bel Air, 265. Uh, I like the picture. I like the car. Old guy that owns it's a period piece too, so... Anyway, thanks for watching. So now we're going to show what's uh, going on with the floors. Uh, um, got in here with a wire wheel and started cleaning some stuff up um, since the last video. Um, one of the things that I discovered was that the rear pan here that I thought I was going to be able to patch is not going to be patchable, so we'll be replacing this rear pan as well. Uh, begun the process of removing the front floor pan and uh, this is the pan that, that is available from Dan Chuck. Um, looks like it's powder coated, but I'm sure it's a weld through primer on it. It be powder coated. Uh, and then, uh, so the front brace is involved in this. Um, and uh, the other thing too is that uh, the kick panel retainer is part of the floor. You know, I'd probably make another one of these out of a piece of 16 gauge stainless. This one's pretty pitted, but if I wanted to save it, I could probably save it. Um, and uh, so the, the, where the brace is attached to the rocker, this with the spot welds, um, that I removed that and uh, begin the process of cutting these and, and uh, chiseling them away around the spot welds and then we'll grind the rest of the steel off. Same thing along the rocker. Okay. There's another thing I discovered when I it looks solid until it's hit with a wire wheel. Now it's Swiss cheese. So I've got some rocker to replace here. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that you were going to discover as you move forward in this process. The, uh, the other side of this car is in great shape for a Tri-5 Chevy. I think I've said that probably 16 times since we've been doing these videos. but. It's like this. It looks like a little bit that needs to be passed right there. You take a wire reel to it and this is what you get. So um, as we go along in the process, we will be probably replacing more flooring. I hope not. Maybe little patches here and there. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's 60 years old, this car, so it's going to need some work. So you kind of see that there's still some, some of this black it's where it's heavily pitted. The steel is still got some blackness on it. Um, 
This is like one of the worst four cans. There's places in the trunk that are like this too. But the the isocyanurate coating should seal all that. There's no scale left. So this is two days worth of working with a poor Harbor Freight sandblaster and a, uh, a rendered 185 CF compressor. So this came out pretty good. Uh, the trunk floor came out pretty good. Um, like I said, I'm gonna coat this stuff and it should be good. Um, then uh, the next step is to get it turned around and probably do some walnut shell blasting on the exterior all up, get some of that paint off of there. But I don't think we're gonna be coating today. Um, anyway, that's how it is.